Fellow Tinkerers, welcome back. If you've watched parts one through three of the Tinkercad tutorial series, and you're now back to watch part four of the series so that you can learn about the work plane, the ruler tool, we're gonna cover some of the features of blocks and bricks and potentially even SimLab, or maybe I'll leave that for a separate video, but we're gonna cover a lot today. And you are starting to become a Tinkercad warrior. You are sharpening your 3D printing and CAD skill set, and I want to congratulate you on that and also remind you that if you navigate to promoambitions.com forward slash Tinkercad, you will see the newest videos uploaded here and you can see all the keyboard shortcuts. Shortcuts are a great way to work efficiently, so make sure that you visit this resource and there's a lot of other helpful things there, like you can find out how you can make money from 3D printing or you can watch the original video set from 2018 to 2019 that video set has nearly a million views in total and that's thanks to all you people so let's dive right in we're gonna drag out this Ico Sahedron and we're gonna select F to fit it in view so that we could see it a little bit larger now I'm gonna hold down the shift key and I am going to drag out one of these red points here so that we can uniform scale it make it a little bigger now what I wish to do is I wish to put a letter and numbers on each and every side of this icosahedron. So there's one way to accomplish that. First, we need to find the actual letters and numbers. And I noticed that Tinkercad, they switched around where you could find these different types of shapes. But the helpful thing is they have a search shapes feature here. So you can simply type in letters. And if you hit enter, you are going to see all the letters. And if you don't see the one that you're looking for, just simply select more shapes. So what I'm going to try to do is place this green D on the surface of this triangle red on this surface area of the side of this shape. So how do we accomplish that? Well, there's a couple of ways. Tinkercad came up with a really helpful feature known as cruising along objects, where you can simply hover over the object and it will give you the different various ways that you can position it on different surfaces. So for instance, if I let go right here, you will see that now I am working on this plane right here. And what I can do is I can hold down shift and I can simply minimize the D, place it in the center, and you will see that we are done. Now, I covered this in a separate video, but just to remind you, if we click away, you will now see that the D is placed on this icosahedron, but maybe it's not exactly looking like it's in the center of the triangle. And you might click on it and try to place it in the center and then you'll be like oh boy i don't know what's happening here it's kind of going inside and that's not what i was hoping for like if we take a look here it's now doing something quite odd the reason it's doing that is because we are not on the work plane of the actual d letter that was on this surface to get back there so let me control z we can always select the object and then press the button e and then we will see it on the work plane once again. And now if we go ahead and we try to move this shape, it will always be on the surface of the triangle of the icosahedron. So what I will do is I will X out of this and I want to point out something that you're probably gonna run into this issue a lot. So we're gonna delete the D and in our shapes panel, we're gonna type in letter hit enter, and you will see that if we find our D again, if we place it on the work plane, and then let's say we resize it, and now we wish to bring it onto this triangle, if we simply drag like we did before, it's doing nothing. It's just dragging it on this bottom work plane, and that's not what we're trying to achieve. This is because the only time that you can cruise with objects is when you are dragging the shapes out initially. And because the D was already there and we resized it and dropped it on the work plane, we are no longer able to bring it onto the surface. Now, obviously we can raise it and we can try to rotate it. And then what we can try to do is just manually position it. But I'm telling you, it's gonna be a nightmare and it's very difficult to do and it's not gonna be very accurate. So if you want an object to be flush 
with this surface area. There is an amazing way to achieve that. So if you select this work plane, you can hover over any surface area of any object. And if you click on it, all of a sudden we're working on that work plane. So now if we go to search, we search for letters, we select the D, we can bring out the D, we can resize the D, we can position the D to be in the middle. And now, as you can see, the D is perfectly in the middle. And now one thing you may be confused by is how do you get out of this work plane? Because there's really no easy way. Like if we bring the E, it's now everything's being created on this work plane, but, but maybe I wanna work on a different work plane or go back to the original work plane I was working on. Very simple, simply, Go to the work plane tool or you can select W. So let's try that shortcut key W. And then you just select your original work plane and it goes right back there. And that is very, very helpful. Now take a look at this feature that I don't even think Tinkercad advertises. I'm not even sure if they know it exists, but I spotted it and I wanted to show it to you guys. So remember we went to work plane and we placed this on the surface area here to create the D. Well, if you select shift, you will see something happen. You will see this cone go upside down. What does that mean? It means that we are actually flipping the work plane when we're placing it. Let me show you exactly what I mean. If I flip the work plane when I place it, here's what happens if I try to add a D to this surface now. And this can be very helpful. We will actually be working on the other side. So look at this. Now it's placing the D underneath. It's actually placing it here. And this is wild. You can actually flip the work plane and work on it that way. This is amazing. And it's actually really funny that there's not a lot of resources out there and Tinkercad doesn't really mention it often. But we are actually, if we look at it from this view, we're actually working on the other side of the work plane. How did we achieve that? Well, by simply pressing W and shift and then selecting where to place the work plane. Now, this is extremely helpful for not just placing objects that are flush with a surface area, but it's also a great tool for cutting away at objects. So let's bring out this heart shaped object here. I'm going to press down C so that we don't get this cruise feature because that's not what I'm looking for. I want to place it on the actual work plane. Then I'm going to go, I'm going to extend it out. And then we've learned this in a separate tutorial, but what I'll do is I'm gonna align this because I want it directly in the middle. How do I do that? Well, I achieve that by selecting these center points on align. And now this is perfectly aligned in the center of the heart. Now what I wanna show you is this feature right here. So watch this. If I X out, we're gonna lift this heart shape and now what I want is when I print, I want the bottom of this heart shape to be the actual bottom. So I don't want any of this section here. Now what we can do is we can drag out, let's say a hole that's a square, place it underneath and try to cut away. But there's actually a much easier way to do it with the work plane tool. So watch this. I simply place the work plane on the bottom right here. And now we are working on the bottom of the work plane. And now if I go and I select this box, which is a hole, and remember, we don't want it to cruise like this, so we hold down C, and we simply bring it over the entire bottom red part, and I'll expand it so that it covers it fully, and I will actually select the bottom view, and you will see that it covers it fully. Now what's gonna happen is if I select all the objects and I group them together, you're gonna see that we actually perfectly cut away at that section and now we are flush with the work plane and this is very helpful because when you go to actually 3d print geometrical shapes if you have a flatter surface it's going to be easier to 3d print especially if you are using a 3d printer and you don't want a lot of supports and you want something pretty flat to the surface this is an excellent way to achieve that all right so let's now discuss the ruler tool and i want to show you when the ruler tool is appropriate and not appropriate so what the ruler tool does is it could give us really good measurements of the object itself and relational distance between other objects. So all you do is you place the ruler anywhere on the plane 
and then if you select an object, you're going to see a whole lot of information about its dimensions, which by the way, you can then simply change and it will change that dimension. So let me show you what I'm talking about right here. This is something that I designed a few years back. And then I want to point out why it may not be the best example of how to use a ruler tool. So right here, this number 90, that's this arrow right here. This is what it's showing us. However, if we take a look here, there is black arrows, but there's also this halo blue type arrows. What that is, is it gives us the distance between this red circle. So this is the origin, wherever we drop the ruler. This is telling us that it's 112 distance from here to the edge. And it's also telling us right here that it is 51 distance between this origin and the edge. Now, when I say edge, this is where we have to be careful because I grouped it as one object. It's actually starting it not from the edge point here where I would like it to, but it's starting from this where it says Belkin. The edge of it is where it starts measuring. So you have to watch out for these things. However, it can be really, really helpful because it's exact, precise measurements. So let's now take a look at a practical example. So let's say I built a mock house right here with a roof and this is the chimney. Now I need to place the chimney, but I need to make sure that the center point of the chimney is exactly five millimeters away from each edge of this house. I can simply achieve that with the ruler tool. Let me show you how. I have the chimney selected, I place the ruler tool. Now we have to go and find our O, this is our origin. We're gonna place this on the corner of the house. And if you know geometry, this is like the X plane, Y plane, and the Z plane goes up and down. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, don't worry about it, it's not important yet. Okay, so once we place that, we can see some information here. Remember that I told you that the blue is what signifies the distance between the object and the edge, whereas the black is simply measuring the dimensions of the object. So right here, if you select on the three dots, let me get rid of the shape panel, you see this three lines encompassed in a circle? If we select that, we can use the end point or we can use the midpoint. What does this mean? Well, we want to use the midpoint because we're trying to make sure that the center of this chimney is exactly five millimeters from both sides of the house. So how do we accomplish that? Well, we zoom in where it says the blue arrow. We're going to select negative five. That's to show that the center point is now from here to the edge. There's a distance of five. And then if we go over and we take a look at the other measurement, which we should be able to see right here, actually, it's within the house. So this gets a little bit complicated sometimes, but we select this as five. Now we see that from the edge all the way to the center point of the chimney is exactly five by five. And this is one way to achieve that. I know a little bit complicated of an example, but CAD sometimes it gets a little bit complicated. Now, if we go ahead and we group all of this together by pressing control G, we will see that if we close the ruler tool by just selecting dismiss the ruler, we click on home, we zoom in once more, and then we select the ruler tool, we place it and we touch the house, we can once again see the measurements of the house, but because it's grouped together, we can't select separate objects. So if you want to select separate objects, you have to ungroup or bring new objects in. But let's say now we have a big sphere here. If we select both objects, we will now once again be able to see a lot of helpful relational information as it pertains to this object and this house right here. How can we accomplish that? Well, if we drag it over anywhere, let's say to the edge of the house right there, and then we select on the sphere, it's going to show us from the center of this sphere going all the way to the edge. We're looking at 55 millimeter distance. Now, what is the distance here? 
from the edge of the sphere. So imagine there was a line going all the way down to the work plane, the edge of the sphere to the edge of the house. Well, that's very simple to do because we know that this is 55, but it's measured from the edge to the center of the sphere. So if we want to go to the edge, all we do is we figure out how long it is from here to here. And we could tell that it's 10 because the total sphere is 20 and half of it is 10. So all we would have to do is subtract 10 from 55 and we get 45. And that'll be the distance from here to here. Also, what we can do rather than do all that math that we just did is we can simply select use endpoint. And now it's showing us the end point of the sphere. See this blue halo? It is showing us the end point of the sphere going all the way to the edge of the house. And it's saying that it's 45. The other thing I wanted to point out about the ruler tool is that if you bring it to an edge and then you select another object, not only is it showing you length, width, and height, but if we go and raise this object, it's also going to point out the altitude to us, which is kind of amazing. And also you can keep selecting the origin. So the red O and it's going to show you various sides. So see now it's measuring from different sides and different corners than it was before. And this can be very, very helpful as well. Now I did promise that I would cover some of these. So this is the bricks platform and this is helpful if you're working with let's say Lego style pieces and you're trying to create something like that. And there's definitely some things you can do here. I believe that I will cover this in a separate tutorial and just to show you here there's also an option to create blocks. Also, we have a simulation lab, which is actually phenomenal, where you're able to actually choose the different type of material. And then we can see what happens when you roll this ball or do certain operations. It gets pretty interesting. We can actually even change this to a hardwood floor. And when you're getting into physics and stuff, you can see like what it would take to move certain objects to see what the effect is based on density, friction, and all this really, really advanced stuff. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna keep it simple. I might make a separate video on the simulation tab. And lastly, I wanna point out that if you go to Tinkercad and you select create, you actually have the option of creating circuits and you can actually create code blocks, which is very, very amazing. And I think I'll cover this in a different video because I don't want to make it too long. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys for watching this video in its entirety. If you enjoy this type of content, please do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends about me. Let's tinker along and look out for the next tutorial video, which is going to drop very, very soon.